Hello and welcome back. My name is Sean, also known as Chili Chump. When you're growing chilies, you don't get your harvest all at the same time from a single plant. Sometimes there'll be two, maybe even three harvests and the chilies will ripen at varying stages. This can cause a challenge when you're fermenting your chilies. Now I've already done a video in the past with how to deal with this when you're using a bubbler or bucket type system to ferment your chilies and I will link that up above. But today we're going to be talking about vacuum seal fermentation and create its own little challenges and I'm going to talk you through a nice easy way to be able to add chilies to your fermentation. The fermentation we're looking at today is my Naga Morik. I started this on the 2nd of September, 2022. Today is the 28th of October, 2022. So it's been a little while, I've been waiting. I've got a lovely harvest ready to be picked right outside. So let's get that done first and then we'll come back and we'll actually add that to our fermentation. Here are our beautiful chilies. All we need to do now is get rid of the stalks and get them ready to be weighed. That is 300 grams of beautiful ripe Naga Morix. Now we're doing a 2% because we are doing vacuum seal, so you don't need as much salt. And 2% of 300, that gives us six grams of salt. For this specific recipe, I'm gonna be adding in some cardamom at this stage. These are just dried green cardamom. It's a lovely flavor for really strong chilies like these which are really hot really pungent these cardamom pods do a great job now you can fry them up a little bit to uh, get more of the flavors out but i find that this works just great as it is i'm putting in nine of these dried pods and that's 300 grams here and i believe it was about 300 grams for the original batch as well Smells good, but <coughs> but it's hot. <clears throat> Definitely some fumes there. Let's first take a look at this vacuum seal fermentation and see how we've done so far. Because you don't want to add lovely fresh chilies to a fermentation that is not doing very well because you don't want to waste this good stuff. But looking at this, this looks absolutely perfect. Uh, it's softened up a lot, and obviously it's produced a lot of CO2 over here. When lactobacillus does its job, lactobacillus is the bacteria that performs the fermentation, it releases CO2 and it releases lactic acid. Lactic acid is going to make this shelf stable, make it safe because it increases the acidity or decreases the pH level. Now I'm actually gonna show you two things here. Number one is obviously, the whole point of the video, I'm gonna show you how to add fresh ingredients into an existing fermentation like this. But the other thing is, these bags can really blow up and uh, you might need to release some of the CO2. What I would suggest doing is snip the corner, push the air out gently while you're releasing the air. You don't need to release it all because the CO2 is actually helping to keep this safe. But while it's releasing, just close that up and seal across the line again and you can let it carry on doing its thing. And you can do that over and over as you need to. With the fact that this fermentation is well underway, that means that it is pretty safe at this stage. The lactobacillus is the dominant culture within this. So you're not as worried as you would be when you first started out with this initial fermentation. However, it's still best to be safe. And anything you're gonna use, like I'm gonna use this funnel over here. This is a jam funnel or a pickling funnel. I am going to spray this down with a bit of star sand. It has been cleaned and sterilized beforehand as well, but it's just best practice. Make sure that everything is as clean as possible. You don't wanna waste these beautiful chilies that we've just gone and picked. We wanna make the hole just big enough for the funnel. Uh, the scissors have also been sterilized and sanitized. Anything that's gonna come into contact with this, you should make sure is properly clean, sterilized and sanitized. <laughs> wow, that's strong smelling. So one of the reasons you're using a funnel is to make sure that you don't mess on the plastic. 
which I already have here, but we will wipe that off. Now you can use star sand again, or you can use spirit vinegar, just a bit of a kitchen towel like that. And uh, I'm gonna use star sand and just give it a good wipe. Now you also wanna wipe on the inside of this and just on the lid, yeah, you don't have to go too deep down, but just do something like that and uh, just pull that through. In case you've never done a vacuum seal fermentation, if you are looking to get a vacuum sealer, make sure it's one that has a moist setting, so little droplets on there, and they normally make it quite obvious on the listing. I will leave a link down below for the one I'm using, but yeah, just make sure you have one that has the moist setting. So we're just gonna make sure that it can suck out any air over there, and make sure that the sealing strip, which is over there, is going to cover off at least where we've cut, which it will do. That has sealed it up perfectly. And, yep, yeah, you can see there, the line comes across there. So that is gonna allow for expansion again, and uh, we're gonna get a lovely fermentation. So let's get that all mixed up now, the new stuff and the old stuff, and that'll just make sure that the fermentation will kick off nice and quickly with the new ingredients that we've added. And once it is all mixed up, and I do this with all my vacuum seal fermentations, I like to get this all back down to one area. So there's a bit of a critical mass. So you can just wipe it down and get that all down there. The fumes inside the kitchen are making me sweat. It's stinging my face. I must have touched my face at some point. Uh, sometimes just the fumes that are in the air when, when it touches your face, it can make you sting, especially when you're working with some hot chilies like we are today. So just take some precaution and uh, don't panic. It does go away after a while. This will sting for probably the next hour or so. But there we go, our lovely vacuum sealed fermentation. We've added to it and uh, that's gonna continue fermenting. You can already see it producing a little bit of CO2. It started to create some bubbles in there already. And uh, I'm sure this is gonna blow up quite quickly. So I need to keep an eye on it, and make sure that it doesn't blow up too much. I will be selling some bottles of this once I've processed it, once it's finished fermenting. So in the next couple of weeks, I'll get it bottled and I'll put it in my store. It'll be a limited run, because as you can see, it's not a, not a ton of sauce that I'll be able to make from this, but uh, there will be some available and I'm sure you're gonna love it because the Nagamarik is a very, very tasty chili. I have a bunch of other sauces in my shop. Actually, I have a couple that uh, I'm putting back into the store, restocking. I've been waiting to do that for a little while now. We have my Sriracha, and I also have the Sting, which is kind of like the Tabasco uh, Scorpion version, but I think a little bit hotter and a lot tastier. So go check out my store, chilichump.com forward slash shop, and that's where all my sauces are, and uh, recipe book, and a few other things. And uh, if you want a shirt like this, I have a new merch store provider, uh, T-Mill, and I'll leave a link down below so you can go and check that out as well if you want to get some early Christmas shopping in. So I hope this tip helped you out and you're making yourselves some beautiful hot sauces out there. Let me know in the comments below which is the favorite sauce that you're making this year. I'm always keen to see what you guys are up to. Thank you so much for watching. I look forward to seeing you on the next video and until then, stay spicy.